Boyle's Law. All right, so let's talk about one of the gas laws that we use often in uh, chemistry. And basically, what is a gas law? Well, it's a simple mathematical formula that we can use to model or predict the behavior of a gas. So basically, we can predict if we do something, what happens to that gas? What does it do? Uh, so Boyle's law relates the pressure of a gas to its volume. So if we change the pressure, what happens to the volume of that gas? In this, uh, in this law, in Boyle's law, the temperature is held constant and so is the amount of gas, which is essentially the number of moles of gas. Both of those are held constant, but we can change the pressure and the volume. Okay, so here's a couple of representations of Boyle's law. Basically, as you increase the volume, then the pressure of the gas inside is going to decrease. So here you can see a larger volume with this piston, okay? You can see the gas is taking up more space than this other one, and so the volume is large, but the pressure is small. Uh, the opposite scenario is shown with the other piston, where we've squeezed down the piston, made the volume smaller, and now the pressure of that gas inside the container is larger, is higher. And this plot shows the same thing. So as the volume decreases, we can see that the pressure increases. So in this equation, there are two pressure variables and they must have the same unit. So P1 and P2 need to have the same unit. Obviously, they're not going to have the same value, but they need to have the same unit. Same thing goes for the two volume units. So they, uh, they can be any volume unit, but they need to be the same. And same with the pressure. It needs to be the same. And that's in most cases. But as long as they're the same on both sides of the equation, then we're fine. Okay, so let's do an example showing how to solve problems using Boyle's Law. So we have a sample of gas and it has an initial pressure of 2.44 atmospheres and an initial volume of 4.01 liters. And its pressure is going to change to 1.93 atmospheres. So we want to know what the new volume is if the temperature and amount are kept constant. Okay, so before we go to the next slide, I just want to point out that um, if you really read the wording of the, this problem carefully, it's going to give you some of the, you know, basically where to fill in Boy the Boyle's Law equation. So for instance, the initial pressure is this quantity and an initial volume. So both of those are going to be P1 and V1 respectively. And in this problem, we have a pressure change, which is going to be P2. So that's going to be P final and that's 1.93 atmospheres. Now we also check and we see that the pressure unit is the same and it has to be the same on both sides. So we don't need to do any conversions in this problem. When we calculate our final volume, it's gonna automatically be in liters. So let's go ahead and, um, and go through this. Okay, so we're gonna use Boyle's Law because we're changing the pressure and the volume. And actually we're just changing Okay, so we're going to use Boyle's Law because we have pressure and volume involved and we're keeping temperature and amount constant. So we just talked about this, but we're going to determine what quantities are given. And so we have our initial values, P1 and V1, as we discussed. And we also have P2. We have the final pressure. Okay, and the unknown that we're looking for in this case is V2. And again, that's going to be in liters. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug in the values. So I've done that here below. So we have 2.44 atmospheres, that's P1. Okay, here's V1, 4.01 liters. Okay, and um, 1.93 atmospheres is our P2, and V2 is right here. Now, um, we need to move uh, P2 over on to this side of the equation. And so what's been done here already is we have divided this side by P2, okay? And then we ha and then because we are doing our algebra properly, we also had to divide this side by P2. So P2 divided by P2, which is right here, that of course is gonna be one, cancels out both the quantity and the unit. 
and P1V1 is going to be divided by 1.93 atmospheres. So when we go to the next slide, we're going to see that we have 2.44 atmospheres times 4.01 liters divided by 1.93 atmospheres, and that's going to be equal to V2 by itself, because these are going to cancel. Okay, so here's what I just talked about, and now we can actually see. So here we've canceled out atmospheres, okay, and that's good. Now notice we didn't cancel out the quantity, just the unit. And that's going to leave us with liters, which is what we want. And then on this side, we canceled out both the quantity and the atmospheres, and now this is 1 multiplied by V1, which of course is just V1. So here's our final numerical uh, problem. Okay, notice the units are gone for the pressures. And so we're going to go ahead and multiply these, 2.44 times 4.01 divided by 1.93, and we're going to get 5.07 liters. Now, as I mentioned in the pressure video, the sig figs are going to be 3 for this problem. And why is that? Because we're going to go up here and we're going to see that we have 3 sig figs here, 3 sig figs here, 3 sig figs here in, in all of the given values. And now if one of those were less than that, then we would have, like let's say one of these were was uh, only 2 sig figs, then the whole final answer would only have 2 significant figures. But they all agree, they're all three significant figures, so we're going to end up with three sig figs in our answer at the end. Okay, so let's do another one, and this time go ahead and try it, and then we'll go through the answer. So a sample of a gas has an initial pressure of 722 torr and an initial volume of 88.8 .8 milliliters. Its volume changes to 0 0.663 liters. What is the new pressure? So we're looking for P2 in this problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and go through this. So again, uh, we're dealing with pressure and volume, so we're going to use Boyle's Law. And um, we also notice in this problem that the two volumes have different units. Okay. Now remember, in Boyle's Law, the volume units have to be the same and the pressure units have to be the same on each side of the equation. And in this case, they're not. So basically, we have to convert one to the other. We can either convert milliliters to liters, or we can convert liters to milliliters. It really doesn't matter which way you do it, whatever you're more comfortable with, whatever you like. Um, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and convert the liters to milliliters. So, but again, you could do it the other way, perfectly fine. All right, so converting. So we know that 1,000 milliliters is equal to one liter. We're starting off with liters and that's in the numerator, so we're going to have liters in the bottom of our conversion factor in the denominator and uh, milliliters on the top. And then we're going to do our math after we've canceled out our liter units. 0 0.663 times 1,000 is going to give us 663 milliliters. So there is our V2 now in the correct unit. So now we're ready to plug everything into Boyle's Law. Okay. So let's plug them all in. So we have 722 torr, 88.8 .8 milliliters, and that's going to be equal to P2 uh, times 663 milliliters. Now again, it's not shown explicitly, but we had to divide both sides by 663 milliliters in order to uh, cancel out 663 milliliters on this side and get it over on this side. So, um, so we've done that. And we're going to have 722 torr times 88.8 .8 milliliters divided by 663 milliliters. Milliliters is going to cancel out. We're going to do the math. And we're, that will be P2. And again, we have three significant figures. So we end up with 96.7 torr. So we automatically get torr because we started off with torr. And so P1 was torr, so we end up with P2 in Tor. Now again, just note these sig figs, notice that they're all three sig figs in our initial values. Okay, so just to summarize, the behavior of gases can be modeled with gas laws. So the first one we have just now talked about is Boyle's Law, and that relates a gas's pressure and volume at constant temperature and amount. 